Hi, welcome to Bullet Journaling for Beginners, brought to you by the Pamunkey Regional Library. My name is Samantha and I'll be leading our program today. I'm a library associate at our West Point branch. I've been bullet journaling for about two years now. I usually use it to help myself keep on track for school or work things, but I also use it as a creative outlet and a way to record my year for posterity. So what exactly is a bullet journal? Although the components have been around for some time, the system itself was developed by Ryder Carroll a couple years ago. A bullet journal is a handmade, flexible planner. It can be used for goal setting, date keeping, journaling, book tracking, etc. It is completely customizable to your tastes and needs. Unlike pre-made planners, this is a system you design yourself. You can change it up as often as you like to fit your needs as they develop, or just to help keep yourself invested. This is helpful for people who find themselves abandoning their regular planners after about two weeks. It is especially helpful for people with ADHD who may find that regular planners don't provide them with the flexibility or engagement they may need. It may even provide a bit of anxiety relief for those who feel better when they are able to physically write out their tasks. Planning out your journal can be a bit time consuming, but bullet journaling is also a great way to promote creativity, keep you organized, and help you slow down and be more meditative. The first step is going to be gathering your supplies. All you really need to start is a notebook and something to write with. There are different kinds of notebooks you can use. I myself prefer the ones with dots instead of lines, but honestly, any notebook will do. Just make sure it is large enough for you to use throughout the year. For those who may feel like being a bit more creative, you can also use things like markers, paints, rulers, and stickers to customize your layout. You don't have to be good at drawing in order to get creative with this. Now that we have our materials, let's get into the setup. The first thing you are likely going to want to set up is your key. The key is a record of the symbols you plan to use in your bullet journal so that you don't have to keep track of what symbol you use for what purpose. It is usually going to be written on the first page or on a slip of paper that you can use as a bookmark throughout your journal. These symbols will help you log information quickly and keep that info organized. As you can see, we have a list of recommended symbols on the PowerPoint. If you've ever written an outline, then you will be familiar with this style of logging information. Because bullet journals can be used for so many different things, it is helpful to know where to find them all. Just like the table of contents in a book, the index is where you will list the things that you put into your journal with their corresponding pages. It's important to note, though, that this only works if you have numbered pages in your journal or if you decide to go through and number them yourself. Now that we have our key and our index set up, we can get into the actual planning. Generally, there are three different kinds of logs that you can use to help keep yourself organized. You can use all three or just pick which ones work best for you. The first thing we'll start with is the future log. This is going to be a general overview of your year. Here, you will list all of the months and then under them, the major events that will take place during that time. This usually takes up anywhere from one to four pages. Next is our monthly log. Your bullet journal will be split up by months. You can put this page at the beginning of each month to show you what is happening during that time at a glance. Lastly, will be your daily log. This is the log you are most likely to use on a daily basis. This is where you will plan out and record your day. I've included an example of Monday through Thursday log that I put in my journal. I usually like to fit my whole week onto two pages with room on the sides for notes if I need, but feel free to explore different layouts until you find one that is right for you. Once you have the bare structure of your bullet journal, you can stop there or get as creative as you like. There are unlimited possibilities when it comes to how your bullet journal looks and what you use it for. 
You can use it to track habits, moods, or wellness. You can make a bucket list of books or movies. You can set goals and intentions for the year. Or you can just personalize your daily setup. These pictures are just a few of the creative ways people use their journals. Along with this presentation, we have also provided a list of resources to help inspire you in your journaling, including a few books here at the library and some digital books that are available through Hoopla at PRL. The resource list and a printable version of the PowerPoint are available through the accompanying link or through requests from your local PRL librarians. As we end this program, there are a few things I hope you will remember as you begin your bullet journal endeavor. Firstly, everything listed here today is just a suggestion. There is no wrong way to keep a bullet journal. Experiment and find out what works best for you. As long as it is helping you keep on task and keep organized, it works just fine. Secondly, whether you've been bullet journaling for years or you're just starting out, you will make mistakes. If you find you messed up on a page, don't tear it out. Just turn it into something new. And lastly, the bullet journal is supposed to be fun and meditative. If you find that it is becoming a source of stress, you may need to either change your approach or find one that works better for you. Good luck and happy journaling.